the council members please come to the well so that we can get the meeting started. All the council members, can you come and have your seat so we can get the meeting started? All right, I gotta, I gotta, on. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Griffin. Here. Bishop. Here. Conwell. Gray. Hairston. Harsh. Here. House Jones. Jones. Casey. Present. Kelly. Present. Moore. Here. McCormack. Palencic. Santana. Slife. Spencer. Starr. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Madam Clerk, please dispense with the journal. By Council Member McCormack that the reading of the minutes of the last meeting be dispensed with the journal approved, seconded by Council Member Bishop. Thank you. We'll now move to public comment. And the first speaker is Kamel Alkayali, Ward 9, Injustice in Cleveland, representing no one, not being paid by anyone. Please acknowledge your time. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My father, Ayman al Kiali, and I run Algebra Tea House in Little Italy. Algebra has been open for over 20 years. It has provided food, safety, and shelter for all. We are a hub for justice, love, and community in Cleveland. If you have watched the news, you would know our business has been attacked nearly a dozen times by pro-Israel racist criminals, specifically one being Alec Poffiger, who has committed hate crimes against Palestinians in Cleveland for half a decade. He has stalked my family, harassed our community, and attempted to ruin our business. The same man that you allowed to speak on this podium, while council forces a disgusting amount of police to be here every Monday. You refuse to do your damn job by protecting constituents from this racist criminal. Many council members have been to algebra, and I would like to ask you, what have we done to deserve this? Is it because the blood that we bleed is Palestinian blood? Is it because the flag that we fly is the flag of justice and liberation? <laughs> is algebra tea house also an overseas issue? Your dangerous and ignorant rhetoric has ignited racist violence. So when we say you have blood on your hands, you all drip with the blood of Clevelanders as well. Every person sits, who sits behind me, you have wronged. We begged for three straight months for you to see our people as human, but we are done begging. Did you forget who, we, who you work for? We run this city. Next election, we will elect our own candidates who seek justice and cannot be bought. And when we sit in your seats, we will show you what leadership is. For some, this is your last chance to save your job by signing the ceasefire resolution. But for others, there is no saving you. Joe Jones has threatened my Palestinian brothers and sisters. You threatened our allies, and it's clear you're an Islamophobe. No amount of saving face will change that. Michael Polenzik, you have accused us of baseless crimes. You are an Islamophobe, and you are unfit for power. And I want to ask you, and please look at me, you coward. What the hell is anti-Semitic about 30,000 Palestinians being slaughtered? You are gone. Justin in bib. Constituents have grieved their families. Look at me, please. You have, constituents have grieved their families that have been slaughtered and starved by Israel, and you have conducted yourself every Monday in a manner that is no short of immature, inhumane, and disgusting. You support genocide. You support ethnic cleansing. You could care less about Cleveland and your power is your only motivation. I know you have aspiring political ambitions, and we will make sure that your political career ends right here for good. Justin Bibb, pack your damn bags. And I will leave you with this. You will all sign a ceasefire resolution. We are done hand-holding you. We will tear down the corrupt po politicians. We will tear down lobbyists. And the change that you fear is the change that we will make. And it all starts here. We are the majority. We hold the power, and we are getting stronger. So to all who stay silent or supported this genocide, by God, I dare you to next run next election. Time. So you can see that when you stand with Israel, you fall with Israel. Time. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Raleigh Petro, 
Raleigh Petros from Ward 17, Topic Ceasefire Resolution in Gaza, Party for Socialism and Liberation in Northeast Ohio, Answer Coalition not being paid by anyone. Thank you. Councilman, can you make sure that the people who are supposed to be facing us actually do that for the record? In the many weeks that citizens have been coming to council to urge you to pass a ceasefire resolution, we have heard a barrage of excuses as to why you will not take up this issue. One in particular that the situation in Gaza has nothing to do with you. I'm here today to address this point. Over the past week, we have experienced terrible cold and snowy conditions. Many unhoused people are not allowed to stay in shelters during the day, and so the city provided warming centers is commendable. But why were they only open during prime retail hours beginning at 10.30 a.m. and then closed at 11 p.m. with no guarantee that those forced out would find shelter from the bitter cold overnight? How is this gesture no more than theater when the city can clearly do better? It is no surprise then that when the city does not have the willpower to provide the most basic resources to the most vulnerable in our community, it would also hold no compassion for the suffering people of Gaza, many of whom will those themselves be killed, not due to the custom, co constant bombing, but from lack of food, medical care, and shelter. And yet, this city is able to provide the largest hiring budget in its history to a police force that terrorizes the homeless, that has trained with the Israeli occupation forces, and has used that training against nonviolent protesters. In the safety committee meeting where this budget resolution was passed, Joe Jones made his now infamous remarks that he needed to buy a gun because he was afraid that those of us coming to city council in support of Palestine would put a bomb on under his car. I ask you now, standing surrounded by police and in front of city officials, more concerned about fruit than the will of its constituents, who is the real threat to this community? As it stands now, over 1,600 signatures from community organizations, businesses, and individuals who live and work in Cleveland have been collected demanding you pass a ceasefire resolution. Unlike those of you on this council who are so short-sighted to not see how our struggles are interconnected, everyone who has signed on to this letter recognizes an injury to one is an injury to all. Each excuse you make to not pass it becomes weaker and weaker by the day, and we will not stand for it. Pass the resolution now and free Palestine. Next, we have Jenna Muhadeen from Ward 15 to talk about current events representing no one not being paid by anyone. Jenna Muhadeen. Assalamu alaikum. When God was instructing Moses in the Quran, he told him to speak a gentle word to Pharaoh because even the most evil of people can have a change of heart with some compassion. So I'm not here to yell at you all, rather I want to tell you a story. This story is from the beginning of the Israeli bombardment of Gaza back in October. Hamza, a young boy, he was born in Gaza, and a year after he was born in 2009, his little brother was killed. In 2014, his father was killed. 2012, his older brother was killed. And then due to the severe trauma of watching his family perish one by one, Hamza became very close to his mom. Because his mama was the last surviving family member, she was his solace and comfort, and she was killed by an Israeli shelling in October. Hamza at 14 then decided to end his own life, and he threw himself off a building in Gaza, and he felt he was unable to live in this evil world anymore. Allah yarhamah. It did not start October 7th. The story of Hamza is the reality of two million Ghazans, with everyone knowing someone who has been murdered by the Israeli forces. So now, 30,000 Palestinian civilians have been killed, half being children. So passing a ceasefire resolution can bring hope to Gaza, as many of us have had family there, and it will show where Cleveland actually stands. So council members, council president, and Mayor Bibb, I ask you to stand up out of your seats if you condemn the murder of 30,000 Palestinian civilians, half being children. I ask you to stand up out of your seats. You're not gonna stand up? Nobody wants to stand up? You think, you 
Stop, stop, stop. Stop. I'm going to ask you again. Stand up if you condemn the killing of men, women, and children. None of you condemn murder. Okay? Okay. So I expected some of you to stand up so this speech won't make sense now, but you guys are literally sitting after asking if you condemn murder. So there we have it. I mean, city council doesn't condemn the murder of men, women, and children. Like, I don't even know what to say. I really thought someone would stand up. So anyway, please understand we're watching the second major massacre of our people for the second time, with the first directly affecting all of our families. It's dehumanizing, our leaders watching this community in pain and struggle and doing absolutely nothing, and now it's clear it's simply because we are Arab. You passed a resolution for Ukraine within a month. Wow. Save Gaza, pass the resolution now. And I want to ask one more time, stand up if you condemn time. murder. Thank you. Stand up! Time. Stand up! Thank you. Next we have Youssef Khalaf from Ward 11 to talk about city council duties to the community, not representing anyone, not being paid by anyone. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Yusuf Khalaf. I was born and raised in Cleveland. I'm a CMSD graduate. I'm also currently an undergraduate student studying at Case Western Reserve University. Mayor Bibb, your alma mater. At Case, under President Eric Keller's administration, we've witnessed a disturbing trend, a climate of hostility and hate towards Palestinians, Arabs, Muslims, and other people of color. This environment has escalated to the point where black and brown people face death threats, harassment, and attacks on campus simply for speaking up against the genocide and apartheid. But that's not what I'm here to discuss. Instead, I'm here to address another pressing concern. The failures of this city council and our disgraceful mayor to serve and protect their constituents effectively. First, I want to say I don't, cond I don't commend Councilwoman Jenny Spencer and Councilwoman Rebecca Meyer for their social media statements calling for a ceasefire. You are just as dishonorable and treacherous as the rest of the people sitting here in this chamber. Your words ring hollow. They, don't, they mean nothing if you don't actually do the right thing and introduce it and call for its passing. It's less than the bare minimum what you did. I hope you're not proud of that. The U.S. government annually allocates at least $3.8 billion to Israel, which translates to over $6 million coming from Cleveland taxpayers' federal tax dollars. The Cleveland, your residents pay that every year. Since 2019, this sum has been consistent and will continue until the year 2028. In total, the U.S. has provided Israel with $124 billion in military aid since 1946. This translates to hundreds of millions of federal tax dollars coming out of your constituents' pockets to fund genocide and apartheid. With Cleveland being the second poorest large city in the United States and having the highest child poverty rate. Imagine what that amount of money can do to solve the real issues of the many problems that plague this city's residents. Do you even care? In 2022, you swiftly responded to Ukraine, four days after the invasion, and you condemned it, and even Michael Plenzik said he condemns the, the killing of innocent men, women, and children. Where is the same condemnation for Palestinian lives lost? Council, why is Palestine any different than Ukraine? Tell me. Are you scared to lose your jobs? Are you scared to piss off your donors? Is that what this is all about? Or do you actually think it's okay to slaughter innocent children and infants? Tell me. The city charter does not even require a ward council member to live in his or her ward to seek election to represent it. So some of you don't even live in your respective wards, but you're telling us what your constituents want. You have some nerve. You all are disgusting, disgraceful, tone deaf, and out of touch with your constituents. The people have woken up, and we will not stand for this any longer. We're no longer asking, we're, only de we're no longer requesting, we're only demanding. We will take the appropriate direct actions to get you to do your jobs. But this corruption, this negligence, this inaction has gone on for too long, even way longer than three months. I've been in this, I was born in this city. Decades this corruption is going on. Time. Thank you. you all have seemed to have forgotten that we the people have the power. Time. And you work for us. I suggest you start editing your resumes and fixing them because you're going to lose your jobs. Time. Thank you, sir. But no one's going to hire you because your resumes have blood. Your resumes have blood all over them. From the children of Cleveland and the children of Palestine. Blood. 
on all of your hands, not just Palestine, Cleveland as well. You've done nothing. Free Palestine. Next we have Juan Collado. Juan Collado, you're on the clock. Juan Collado, you're on the clock. You're on the clock. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. So I'm going to give you the right number. 32,246. That's the number of people that have been killed as of January 19. Those are the people that you all they didn't stand up for. Just give that, let's just put that on the record. 12,660 out of those were children. But you guys are more worried about this, which clearly in the, in the book of Genesis, the Bible, that many of you follow, says that God created this to be eaten. Councilman Palencek, please turn around and look at the people. Please pay some damn respect. This is what you are, are afraid of. Damn fruit that were created to be consumed. It's not contraband, as you all claim. But instead, you spend your time threatening us, spending time on social media releasing useless statements that are not being put here in front of the people. We are tired of this. As an ally, I am tired of listening to you guys every Monday creating ridiculous rules, closing the front rows because you all feel threatened by us. What about us is a threat? What about the people behind me is a damn threat? Because they're not the same as you? Is that the threat? Is that how we feel that every Monday we have to sit here and give you the same talk every single Monday and you guys don't do anything? But for Ukraine, you guys release a statement in less than four days. You see the hypocrisy of every single one of you. Next year is an election year for all of you in here. And if I see a statement, by that time, so help me God that I'm gonna make sure that neither either of you get elected. And I'm gonna make sure that I give you hell during your campaigns. Because this is tiring. It is tiring to have you 20th century politicians managing 21st century issues. And even a 20th century issue, because this is over 70 year old issue, that you guys cannot release a statement. Mayor Bibb, when you got elected, you said you were here for the people the people of Cleveland. Cleveland has one of the largest populations of Middle Eastern Palestinians and you're still not supporting those people. You still sit there and literally when you were asked if you condone those deaths, you just sit there and did nothing. You feel, you feel shame of yourself. You feel ashamed that when you got into office, you promised to support the people of Cleveland and you didn't. Lastly, before I go, Councilman uh, Blaine Griffin, we, I sent you an email a couple weeks ago about um, this coward over here, Richard Starr, who threatened me on the internet and you has not replied to me. Um, literally a little coward over here that has to go behind social media to threaten people. To threaten people online over a simple stupid message. So if you get a chance, please give me a call. You have my number, all of you do. So, Tom, thank you. Good night. Next we have Ariel Bibas. Ariel Bibas is from Kibbutz Kafar Eza, and he is the topic about Israel hostages. He is not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Is Ariel Bibas here? Ariel Bibas, is Ariel Bibas here? I don't see Ariel Bibas, we'll move on, thank you. Next we have Kayla Moss from Ward 9. She wants to talk about Black History Month and uh, Kayla is not representing anyone and she is not being paid by anyone. Is Kayla Moss here? Kayla Moss. Come on up, Kayla. As he said, I'm here to talk about Black History Month, which starts next week. We will spend the next month talking about our ancestors with the reverence they deserve. I would like to point out that those of us who are black in this room are creating black history as we stand here today. With that being said, I would like to start by giving a brief black history lesson. 
On August 15, 1967, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee printed a newsletter talking about the Six Day War. They talked about the history of how the State of Israel came about by British colonial forces in 1917. This didn't start on October 7th. They recognized and identified with the Palestinian people as the U.S. and other white Western countries exploit and control the nations of Africa and the Middle East. Reverend Jesse Jackson, during his presidential campaigns, tried to work toward getting the Palestinian Liberation Organization a seat at the table to negotiate with the U.S. directly. In an interview with Journal in 1985, when asked about the black Americans' awareness of the similarities of apartheid South Africa and apartheid Palestine, Jackson said, and quote, there is a substantial awareness of it. We understand life under occupation because we've been occupied. We understand the violent nature of occupation. Those who will fight against the occupation here will be called militant. Those who will fight against the occupation there will be called terrorists. This, the fact is, as long as you have an occupier-occupy relationship, you have a violent relationship." End quote. During the Black Lives Matter protests in the past decade, Palestinians in the Occupy West Bank taught protesters how to combat the effects of tear gas by militarized police. There are murals of George Floyd all over Palestine. I say all this to say that there's long been solidarity between black, the pal black community and Palestinian Americans and all throughout the world. This council that represents one of the blackest major cities is currently acting against what many of our ancestors rallied for. I'm shamed by the dog whistles by Councilman Joe Jones and Councilman Michael Polensik, as these are things we as black people have experienced firsthand. Not picking a side because of the fear of losing donors is cowardly. The citizens of Cleveland deserve better leadership. We should not have to use the martyr people of Palestine to persuade you. The fact that it's been over 100 days and you've ignored your constituents is disgraceful. I'm not here to just remind you that this didn't start on October 7th, but officially 1917. I am here to demand that you honor our ancestors for Black History Month by standing in solidarity with Palestinians, by doing the bare minimum and calling for a ceasefire. If not, we will not only remember the Nakba of 1948, but we will also remember this moment as you speak about, as we speak about your re-election dates. We do not need people on city council who don't reflect our humanity. Time. Thank you. Don't celebrate Black History Month in vain. Next we have, Stop next we have Basma Hamid. Basma Hamid is from Ward 13. Basma Hamid wants to talk about the ceasefire in Gaza, not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Being a child care provider for 25 years, my heart is broken to witness the lives of innocent men, women, and children slaughtered in cold blood on the streets in Gaza and Palestine for the past 75 years. If you have any type of any human consciousness, you will do whatever you can to stop this ethnical cleansing, genocide, and massacres committed every day against helpless, innocent, defenseless people of Palestine by the murderer Netanyahu and his regime. When children in Gaza and Palestine asked who do they, what do they want to become when they grow up, their answer comes, I don't know, because I don't know if I'm going to grow up with the occupation of my land. If you are a real human who has a heart with feelings and really care about humanity and protecting your humankind, nothing, and I say nothing, should stop you from supporting humanity in Gaza to stop the genocide committed against Palestinians in Gaza and Palestine. You all owe it to yourselves. It is inhumane to support the regime led by cold blood killers of Palestinians in Gaza and Palestine.
Let me tell you a story told by an eyewitness about a woman who went to the bakery to get bread to feed her hungry kids so they don't die of starvation. An inhumane Zionist of Netanyahu's regime, snipers, shot her to death in the head on her way back while holding the bread in her hand and never made it back to her children. Children in Gaza and Palestine love life and have dreams like other children around the world and would love to grow up and follow their dreams in becoming true to be doctors, teachers, and engineers. Is that a privilege or a necessity? Life to all children around the world is a necessity, regardless of colors, nationality, religion, and must be always provided and supported by everyone here on the planet. And taking it away is a red line and should be punishable by law. Hospitals, schools, mosques, roads, universities are continuously being bombarded day and night. There is no electricity, water, water, food, or medicine. Life is hell to all people. Nothing is functioning at hospitals in Gaza. The, the, media, the media all over the world, including the U.S., is backed and supported by the Zionist blood money. They switch the facts into lies and turn the public opinion to be on the oppressor's side. Now the public is awakening and realizing the difference between the oppressed and the oppressor. Why do you think Netanyahu Time. is refusing a Palestinian state now? Time. The Thank truth you. is that showing that his true colors are providing Israel an apartheid Time. state committing genocide. Whether you like it or not, Time. Palestine will be free from the truth. Next, we have Diane Setti. Diane Setti is from Ward 15. And Diane Setti wants to talk about humanity. Diane Setti, you're on the clock. Is Diane Setti here? Hello, my name is Diana Setti. I'm a mother and resident of Ward 15, formerly Ward 4, and work in a children's hospital. For the past 108 days, I have witnessed my tax dollars be used to devastate the Palestinian health care system. There are six ambulances remaining in Gaza to serve over 2.3 million people, half of whom are children. The massacres in Gaza are so high, a brand new medical acronym has been created, WCNS. Uh, F, wounded child, no surviving family. There are now more than 25,000 new orphan children since October 7, with more than 10 children a day losing either one or both of their legs, with many amputations performed without anesthesia. Miscarriages have increased by 300% since October 7, with many of the 50,000 pregnant Palestinians enduring C-sections without anesthesia. Can you stop and imagine for just a second what it might look like to have an amputation or a C-section without anesthesia? If so, you wouldn't hesitate to call for a ceasefire. More than 30,000 people have been killed and missing, including more than 12,000 children in just two months. And for reference, in Ukraine, over 500 children have been killed in two years. And you easily passed a rev resolution around that issue. So why hesitate now? We're left to wonder if City Council is prioritizing a perceived political and economic game of making deals with exploitative billionaire war profiteers like Transdime, housed in the U.S. Bank Plaza with founders acting as board members and donors for major institutions in Cleveland. Maybe it's more important to have high-profile genocide-funding friends like BlackRock, keynote speak at Greater Cleveland Partnerships Sustainability Summit tomorrow, as if The Guardian didn't just release a report revealing e Israel's ecocide and how in the first months of the Black Rock-backed bombing campaign, the state of Israel has produced more planet-warming gases than 20 climate-vulnerable nations do in a year. It should not be hard to stand behind nonviolence, but maybe it's more important for you all to prioritize the millions of 
philanthropic funds tied to the State of Israel that flow through almost every nonprofit and institution in this city. As MLK Jr. said, there comes a time when one must make a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must make it because conscience tells him it is right. And I will tell you that you can pretend that calling for a ceasefire is out of your purview as some international policy, but we all know a ceasefire or lack thereof can be felt on every single street of this city, a city whose people have experienced medical apartheid, where racism is a public health crisis, and we have one of the nation's highest infertility rates for black babies. Stand up against racism, against apartheid, against genocide. Stop prioritizing profit over people to counsel. Every single death is on your hands every single day that you do. You fail to use every single ounce of your power to call for a ceasefire and an end to Thank the you. brutal apartheid that the Palestinians have been doing for 76 years. Just know we are all Palestinians. Palestine will Thank be free. You. Palestine will live forever. Thank you. Khalid Hamdallah is from Ohio City. Khalid wants to talk about the ceasefire, and he is not representing anyone, and he is not being paid by anyone. Khalid, you have the floor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khalid Hamdallah, and I've been a proud Northeast Ohio resident for over 25 years. And for the last three years, I've been happy to call Ohio City home. While you guys have rightfully been getting dragged for the last three months, I come today with a different type of message. I'm not going to bore you with the numbers on how many children have been killed and maimed, about how many families have been displaced as part of a greater fascist ethnic cleansing movement, about how many face imminent starvation and disease due to the blockade on humanitarian aid and resources, a move backed by our federal government. Before October, I, like so many others in the diaspora, struggled being a Palestinian American, living every day with the survivor's guilt in a country hell-bent on passing and enforcing policies aimed at dehumanizing us and erasing our experiences. I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders, at times leaving me hopeless and isolated. But that weight has now been shared by so many others, and ironically, it's made me stronger. Look around this room. You seem to think that the issues in Palestine are reserved for Palestinians only, but the people who vote for you or don't, believe otherwise. We've packed this hall every week with Jews, Christians, Muslims, and non-religious people alike. We are not bound to this cause by race, religion, or creed, but rather by a belief that all people deserve to live in liberty, safety, and dignity. This is a human issue. Rather than listening to your constituents and engaging with them honestly, you have in fact done the opposite, complaining about our presence here and working to limit our ability to make public comment. You feigned fears for your safety despite a one-to-one -one ratio of police and law enforcement present. But through your silence, we hear you. And in return, we promise to loudly speak the language you value most, votes. I thank you for your open-faced hypocrisy, for talking the talk but failing to walk the walk, for showing us what we need to do as a community to make real change. In the past three months, we've rallied around you. We've organized in a way I never knew was possible. The greater Cleveland community is more engaged than ever. We've registered more people to vote in the last three months than in the last three cycles before it, and we have you to thank for that. And I also wanted to apologize, for you are on borrowed time. The citizens of Cleveland will speak loudly at the next election cycle, and the next one, and the next one, and every single one after that. We will empower and elect our own officials, ones who genuinely serve the interests of their communities. I leave my people with a quote. You cannot wait on the courage of cowards. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call communications. File number 69, 2024, from Council President Blaine Griffin, designating without objection by Council Alan Dreyer to serve as Clerk of Council pro, pro Tem for all matters requiring the Clerk's signature between January 9, 2024 to January 12, 2024. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, file number uh, 70-2024, regarding a transfer of ownership application 
at 12730 St. Clair Avenue, Ward 10. File number 71, 2024, regarding a transfer of ownership application at 14053 Lorraine Avenue, Ward 16. Thank you. Are there any condolence resolutions? Resolutions of condolence by all members of council for Kathleen P. Rolfe, Charlene Berry's mother, by Council Member Polensic for Judge Ronald J. Suster. Thank you. Are there any other condolences? <laughs> Madam Clerk, please hold out a number for Dexter King, um, the son of Martin Luther King as well. Councilman uh, Conwell, you had a Councilwoman House. Please hold out a number for uh, Pamela Stoudemire um, Rosado, as well as for um, uh, Mrs. Betty White. Thank you. Please hold out those numbers. Uh, are there any other condolence resolutions? Councilman Richard Stark. Please hold out a number for Wanda Vesa. Okay. Are there any other condolence resolutions? Seeing no other condolence resolutions, will all council members please rise for a moment of silence? Thank you. Are there, Councilman uh, Bishop? Yeah, could you please hold out a number for Lamonte Betts? Lamonte Betts, if we could please hold out a number for Lamonte Betts. So All right, do we have any presentations? Any presentations? I don't believe we have one today. Councilman Conwell has one next week, but not today. Um, uh, we will now move to updated rules and procedures for public comment to be approved and read the motion to approve new rules and procedures. Madam Clerk, please proceed. A motion by Council Member McCormack to approve file number 86 2024 public comment rules and procedures, seconded by Council Member Bishop. Read the motion to approve new rules and procedures. Read the vote. Call the vote. Okay, inform Council. This will be a voice vote, so each Council Member will be called, and you can register your vote once you are called, okay? Griffin. Yes. Bishop. Conwell. Yes. Gray. Hairston. Harsh, House, House Jones, I'm sorry. Joe Jones, yes. Casey, yes. Kelly, yes. Moorer, McCormack, yes. Palencic, yes. Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. Yes. Okay. 16 yeas. No Thank nays. you. I believe that takes care of that. We will now move to first reading emergency ordinances referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance 72-2024 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Finance to enter into an agreement with the National Forum for Black Public Administrators and AmeriCorps VISTA for the placement of an intern in the Department of Finance Division of Information Technology Services to provide support for the city's broadband initiative for a period of one year. Ordinance 73, 2024, by Council Members McCormack, Bishop, and Hairston, by departmental request, authorizing Director of Capital Projects to issue a permit to 4116 Lorraine LLC to encroach into the public right of way above Lorraine Avenue by installing, using, and maintaining a new entry canopy. Ordinance 74, 2024, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into a license agreement with Key Bank National Association to use and occupy city-owned property located within Cleveland City Hall for the installation and maintenance of a Key Bank automated teller machine terminal located in room 122, vital statistics for the use and convenience of the general public for a period of two years with one additional one-year option to renew, exercisable by the Director of Public Works. Ordinance 75, 2024, by Councilmember Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing Director of Finance to employ one or more professional consultants or vendors 
for the purpose of providing emergency medical building services, coding, reimbursement, and compliance services for the Division of Assessments and Licenses, Department of Finance, for a period of three years with two one-year options to renew, exercisable by the Director of Finance. Ordinance 82-2024 by Council Members Santana and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Finance on behalf of the Office of Prevention, Intervention, and Opportunity to employ one or more professional consultants to design and implement a summer 2024 youth and young adult employment program, not to exceed a term a total term of 18 months, with one or more options to renew for an additional total term not to exceed 18 months, exercisable by the Director of Finance. Ordinance 83-2024, by Councilmember Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing Director of Human Resources to employ one or more professional consultants to provide professional specialized business consulting and assessment services for the purpose of recruiting specialized job positions for a period of one year with three one-year options to renew exercisable by the Director of Human Resources. Thank you. First reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 77-2024 by Councilmember Griffin, authorizing the Clerk of Council to enter into an agreement with Guy Gadomski for the professional financial advisory services related to the 2024 city budget estimate for Cleveland City Council and repealing Ordinance 41-2024 passed January 8, 2024. Ordinance 78-2024 by Councilmember Slife, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Cleveland Housing Network Believe in Home 5K on August 10, 2024, managed by Hermes Sports and Events. Ordinance 79-2024 by Councilmembers McCormack, Starr, House Jones, and Conwell, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Hofbrough Hofbra House Run on August 4th, 2024, managed by Hermes Sports and Events. Ordinance 80, 2024, by Council Members McCormack, House Jones, Hairston, and Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing Director of Community Development to enter into one or more agreements with the Northeast Ohio Coalition for the Homeless and Matanio, Matanio Project. If the I'm sorry, to facilitate seasonal winter shelter for the, season, for the city's unsheltered residents during the uh, winter season, which is approximately December 1st, 2023 to April 10th, 2024. Ordinance 81-2024 by Council Members Conwell and Griffin by departmental request to amend sections 241.05 and 35 of the codified ordinances as amended relating to food shop licenses, fees, and categories. Ordinance 87, 2024, by Councilmember House Jones, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Safety to enter into an agreement with in-step with horses for the Cleveland Police Mindfulness Program through the use of Ward 7 Casino Revenue Funds. Ordinance 88, 2024, by Councilmember Starr, authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Works to enter into agreement with Burton Bell Car Development Corporation for the men and women of Central U Sports Mentoring Program through the use of War 5 Casino Revenue Funds. Ordinance 89-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Gray, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into agreement with Burton Bell Car Development, Inc. for the Red Dog Nation Youth Football and Tutoring Program through the use of Wards 2 and 4 Casino Revenue Funds. <clears throat> Read the motion, suspend the rules. By Council Members. McCormack that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage, seconded by Council Member Bishop. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slyke, Spencer, Starr. Fifteen yeas. Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. Fifteen yeas. Thank you. Second reading, emergency ordinances to be passed. 
Ordinance 1364-2023 as amended by Council Members Palencic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from United States Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Assistance for fiscal year 23 Connect and Protect grant to enter into various written standard purchase and requirement contracts and authorizing Director to enter into one or more contracts with various agencies, entities, or individuals to implement the grant and to, and to accept a gift of the portion of, cash, of the cash match from the Cleveland Foundation. Ordinance 1369-2023 by Council Members Hairston, Starr, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing directors of economic development and finance to enter into a job creation income tax credit, I'm sorry, yeah, income tax credit incentive program agreement with Cleveland Kitchen and or its designee to facilitate the purpose and provisions of this ordinance. Ordinance 1381-2023 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Core Control to enter into the second option to renew a contract with Peregrine Advisors to provide professional, financial, and accounting services for the Department of Court Control. Ordinance 1382-2023 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director of Court Control to exercise a first option to renew a contract with West Roofing Systems to inspect, maintain, and repair, replace roof and roof systems at Cooper Hopkins International Airport and Burke Lakefront Airport. Ordinance 1383-2023 by member, Council Member Hairston designated the American Gas Association Appliance Testing Laboratory as a Cleveland landmark. Ordinance 1386-2023 by Council Member Spencer, Hairston, and Griffin by Department of Request, authorizing the directors of Public Works and Community Development to enter into an agreement with Paisano Properties for the exchange of properties needed for the city's Lake Park Improvement Project and authorizing the Mayor of Commissioner Purchases and Supplies to acquire and convey the properties. Ordinance 1387-2023 by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by Department of Request authorizing Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for fiscal year 2022 Ohio Drug Law Enforcement Fund grant for the operation of cartel gang narcotics and laundering tax service. Director to enter into agreements with Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Office and other entities and, and authorities authorizing the purchase by one or more contracts of one undercover police vehicle to implement the grant. Ordinance 35 2024 as amended by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request to amend section 131.31 of the codified ordinances as amended relating to Highland Park golf rates. Ordinance 4024 by Council Member Griffin authorizing the clerk of council to enter into an agreement with Western Reserve Land Cons Conservancy, DBA Thriving Communities Institute to provide professional services regarding reforestation, demolition, and rehabilitation green space restoration, vacant land restoration, and property information and code enforcement. Ordinance 39-2024 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Human Resources to employ one or more professional consultants to provide recruitment and staffing services, including consulting and direct recruitment for a period of one year, with three one-year options to be exercised by the Director of Human Resources. Everybody other. I'm going to temporarily suspend it. Resolution 30. 
1401-2023 by Council Members Polensic, Bishop, Harrison, and Griffin by departmental request, declaring it necessary to design, inspect, reconstruct, repair, and or install roadways, sidewalks, driveways, aprons, curves, including adjustments of castings and landscaping if necessary, storm sewer, storm sewer structures, and other necessary appurtenances encroaching upon public right-of-way on Newport Beach Boulevard, entire street, and East 159th Street from Newport Beach Boulevard to Lakeshore Boulevard. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Harrison, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Lynn, Six, Santana, Slice, Fifteen days. Second reading emergency resolutions to be passed. Council is adjourned. Thank you.